all may be seated this morning, we generally on Sundays, uh, we have kids church and take the kids down, but what we like to do is one Sunday out of the month, we like to keep everybody in service because the Bible says to bring up a child in the way that they should go, that when they grow older, they'll not turn away from it. How are they ever going to learn to have real church if they don't set in real church with real people and learn how to worship and praise like we have been up until this point, amen? amen. And so next Sunday, the kids will be going back down, and for that very reason is why I want to get right into the Word of God today and not keep you all along because I have found out over the years of ministry that the mind cannot absorb more than the rear end can handle. And when kids get to squirming and people get to shifting from butt cheek to butt cheek, I know it's time to wrap it up, man. <laughs> you know, that song is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, it moves me every time I hear it. But as I think about the stone being rolled away for Jesus, and the tomb being empty. I was reminded of, of another who was uh, clothed in grave clothes and wrapped up and placed in a grave by the name of Lazarus. And you know, the word of God, when Lazarus is called from the tomb, it just simply says, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And Historically, a lot of the old evangelists, the old preachers will say that that happened for a reason. He called Lazarus specifically by name because the power of Christ, his words alone, his voice being God incarnate, just spoken. If he just said, arise, every grave on the globe would have busted open and the dead would have began to walk amongst men everywhere. And so he had to be specific and say, Lazarus, come forth. I think that's a phenomenal aspect because I think sometimes when we think about the life, death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, we need to remind ourselves of what a powerful, powerful, powerful part of the Word of God that is uh, in our ministry as Christians today. Amen. It's why we're here because Jesus was willing to go to Golgotha, the place of skull, and bear the sins of the world. He was willing to pack a cross as people pulled hair from his face, spit on him, punched him with their fists, mocked him, as the Word of God says, placed a crown of thorns down into his scalp, take a sword and pierce his side. And yet Jesus, that power, that same power that can call the dead from the earth, had the ability to stay completely silent except to look out upon a crowd who had jeered and rooted for his death and released a murderer and spoke to the Father and said, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's the state and condition that each and every one of us are in today. Each and every one of us without the salvation of Jesus Christ. We are lost, destined for a devil's hell. We are dead and wrapped in our grave clothes, just waiting for our burial date to come around. I don't know when that's going to be, but I know this, that you can escape those grave clothes. And Jesus has already cried out once and forever, come forth, arise, my love. He did it for you and he did it for me and he did it through his son, Christ Jesus, who he allowed to die for the sins of the world. Amen. Amen. I look at the title for today's message titled Dream On I said I may or may not mention it but you know this old Aerosmith song years ago written said dream on dream on dream until your dreams come true you know uh, it's significant really when we look at the word of God because Jesus wasn't re resurrected to turn bad people into good people. He was resurrected to bring dead people to life. You and I being the dead people that needed to have life restored in us because we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. And it would take the blood of Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, to remove those sins and trespasses from our life and to give us eternal life. For those of you who believe and follow Jesus, today is a great celebration. Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know Jesus, today is a great invitation. Yes, sir. Because God wants to know you in a personal way. And so when I looked at the Word of God today and in the book of Matthew, in the 28th chapter, as we read through a little bit of this Easter story, in verse 1 it says... In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. 
That's the tomb that they placed Christ in. Verse 2 says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Verse 3 says, his countenance, was like, his countenance was like a lightning and his raiment white as snow. Verse 4 goes on to say, And for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered, or excuse me, And the fear of the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Verse 5 goes on and says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. These are powerful words in verse 6. When it says, He is not here, for He is risen. As He said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. Verse 7 says, And go quickly and tell His disciples that He is risen from the dead. And behold, He goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see Him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. You know, the amazing thing is that when we talk about Christ and people want to talk about the, uh, the, not just the gravity of the sacrifice of Christ, but the fact that there were witnesses upon his return to this earth. People saw him. Over 500 in one place at one time. Saw a Christ that had been crucified, placed in a tomb, written off as dead, done forever. The angel of God had sent a message. Go tell him he's not here. He's risen. <coughs> and if you'll go, you go run ahead. Because he'll be before you in Galilee. You'll see him there. Man, can you imagine how exciting that must have been for those women But I want to get to this point today that no matter what looks dead in your life, remember this, it ain't over until God says so. Right. Right. Amen? Amen? Don't toss in the towel just yet because it ain't over, folks. Right. The angel said to the woman, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He's risen, just as he said. And so let me tell you something, folks. It looked like Jesus was dead. It looked like this whole Jesus Christian thing was a done deal, dead in the water, didn't it? Looked like it was finished. And really, when you go back and, and you think about it, if you think about it with an imagination like I have, I just lost something. You think about it with a, wow, what is that? You guys hear me? You think about it with an imagination like I had. I lost one of my monitors up here or something, Dale. Something went on. Anyway, let me get through this. Devil's gonna to try to find us, man. We've had people come and pray today. We've sang songs today. The last thing that Satan wants is any of you to leave out of here with the word of God in your heart. The last thing that he wants is for somebody to come to this altar and pray and ask Jesus into their heart and in their life. The last thing that he wants to see is somebody who has erred and fell away and walked away from the church and from a God they serve to make a decision to come back and to serve him with their whole heart today. He's aggravated at that. So why wouldn't he fight us? The Bible says that he's the principality uh, of the powers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, in high places. You don't think he can tear up sound equipment? No. Huh? He can do anything he wants in this earth. Including take your life and send you to a devil's hell for yes. eternity. Yeah. But there's a way around it. There's a way past it. And that is to know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. To ask him into your heart and into your life. As I thought about what we were talking about, I thought about how everything must have looked to those that were around. I can imagine what, in my imagination, what hell must have been like, the party that must have been going on during that three-day period after Christ had been crucified and his body had been laid in a tomb, after all of his blood had been shed and he'd been wrapped in grave clothes. I can imagine Satan and those little imps, those little demons that surrounded him and the celebration that was taking place in a devil's hell. We got him! No more Christians, no more Christianity. Now not only will we rule this kingdom, but we rule that one as well. Surprise. 
Amen. Surprise! Three days later, the stone was rolled away and Jesus arose from the grave. Can you imagine life today without the resurrection, folks? Can you imagine today uh, what it would be like without the opportunity to know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior? You got to dream on, amen? Amen. 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 Can't hear me? I got you. Mean devil, great God, amen. amen. Watch this, devil. We got more than one mic. <laughs> Not to mention, I got a loud mouth. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. I can hear myself. That's much better. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Listen to this, folks. No matter what it looks like uh, is, uh, no matter what looks dead in your life, remember this, your situation didn't surprise God. God didn't look out one day and see you and uh, you went to the doctor and you found out you were diagnosed with colon cancer or something. God wasn't surprised by that. Your marital relationship was on the rocks and things are rough right now. God ain't overtaken by that. He's not surprised by that. Your job situation is shaky, it's sketchy at best. You don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to provide for your family, how you're going to take care of it. That's just it. You have to get out of the how you're going to do it and get into the how you're going to allow God to help you do it. Amen. That's what he rose from the grave for. Was not only to conquer Satan's kingdom once and for all and forever, but to be an intercessor for us, to allow the Holy Spirit to be dispersed to us, that we could go to Him, that we could cry out to Him, that we could say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, see this situation that's transpiring and taking place in my life. God, see these things that are happening around me. God, I need you to walk into this valley of death, and I need you to stir up some dry bones, man. I need an army to surround me and help me fight these battles because they're real. Why go at it alone when you can go at it with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and, and, and the army that he put be, behind you? Put them through my page so I can kind of stay on track. Because I'm trying to get you guys out of here in five minutes. I had this wrote down in my notes. Keep focused. Keep dreaming. Keep praying. Keep hoping. Keep believing. Keep pressing. That's a lot of keeping, ain't it? But the Word of God says this, and in the NIV and the book of Philippians, it said, But the one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straightforward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 43, 18, 19 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. You see, I'm doing a new thing. God wants to do a new thing here at Momentum Community Church tonight. He wants to take a hodgepodge of people. People who have never been affiliated and associated with church. People who have been drug addicts and drunkards all the days of their life. People who have been established in Pentecostal churches. People who have been brought up in Baptist churches. People who have felt the rudimentary services of a Methodist church. People who have been everywhere and every place and bring them together under one roof and say, This is what heaven's going to be like. So you better learn to get along. Because there's not going to be labels and titles over the door when we walk in to the kingdom of God. And so God has called us, church, to take the message of his gospel out into the world and share it. Your lips can give service to the kingdom of God. Take the message of Jesus to your workplace. Take the message of Jesus into your homes, into your life. Listen, maybe you're a single parent, you're sitting here tonight, you're wondering how you're going to get by, how you're going to raise your kids, just keep doing it with Jesus. It'll work out. Amen. <coughs> Don't go at it alone anymore. Why? I remember as a young man, rowdy, fighting all the time, drunk, doped up I used to go to taverns and bars and I'd always find a corner seat where I could sit with my back against the wall and watch everybody that came in through the door 
keep an eye on everybody and everything. I didn't feel like I had anybody I could trust, anybody I could have look out for me. I'm so thankful today that when I asked Jesus into my heart and into my life, the first thing he did was pull me out of the bars. The second thing he did was teach me to trust him. I didn't have to be afraid anymore. I didn't have to be worried about somebody jumping me from behind or hitting me in the head with a beer bottle. God has a plan for you, folks. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit on him because he won't quit on you. That song rattled when we sang it today. It's out of the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. You can look it up yourself. But Ezekiel 37 symbolizes people whose hope had died, whose dream had died. And they've been dead for a long time. Situation where there's no future, just bones, a valley of dry bones, no signs of life. The Lord asked him a question that God's asking you today about the situation. Can these dry bones live? What is it in your life that's stagnant and stale and tomorrow started to dissipate and started to dry up? Is it too big for God? I don't think so. I don't know what you're going through today, but I know God does. When we come Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. We come to celebrate his resurrection because of the beauty that it signifies to us as men and women of God. But if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you don't understand the resurrection. You don't understand the importance of it. Because my God had victory over death, hell, and the grave. And that's what took away my fears, my anxieties. That's what I'll do it for you too. Don't give up hope. Don't quit. God's still wanting to rattle those bones, man. If you'll let him today. Would you stand with me today? Probably not a very traditional Easter message, but one that needs to be stated anyway. Because here's what I'd like to see this Easter. I'd like to see somebody today who doesn't know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior to understand that he went through all that pain and suffered all that sorrow so that you might have life and the word of God says and that which is more abundant. He wants to put more in life. I'm telling you, there are some of you I've seen. I've seen my sister Julie that sits up here. I remember when she thought that she was reduced just to live to poverty. Because of the abuse and the drunkenness that we had experienced and all the broken relationships and all the heartache and all the hatred that had been cast her way as a young lady growing into a young woman. The physical, the mental, and the emotional abuse. And yet, didn't give up hope. And hope led to prayer. And prayer led to her knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. And God worked things out. Somehow, someway, he gave me a job over at Oakland City University as an admissions director over there. Job required a master's degree. I, I was a high school graduate. But they gave me the job. I didn't know what for or why. But looking back, I know there were some pretty important, pretty special things that took place. I saw young ladies like Cresha, Gilson, my sister Julie enroll in school, take classes, not only get their associate's degree, but their bachelor's degree, even move on to get their master's degree. That deserves a hand today, folks. Don't let this world reduce you to something you are not. Allow God to elevate you to what he created you to be. Amen. Amen. 
Every one of us have a ministry. We have something that God's called us to do in a way that he's called us to live. Let's go out of here today and do that. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to ask this quickly today. There's so many here today. If you want to step out from your pew today and come up here and pray, I'd invite you to do that. But as you're standing where you're at today, can I ask you to do this? Do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Have you asked him into your life and in your heart? If you were to die right now, do you know heaven would be your home for eternity? If not, wouldn't you like to settle that right here, right now, today? And just pray a simple little prayer. We can pray it now together. You can say it, repeat it after me, or you can just quietly let it hover in yourself. I encourage you, if you're going to follow Christ, start lifting up your voice. Start with a prayer that say, God, I'm sorry that Jesus had to die for my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. And allow me to receive the salvation that can only come through Christ Jesus. I want it. And I want to live for you. And I want to serve you all the days of my life because of your son, Jesus. Because it's in his name I pray. And every head bowed, every eye closed. If you prayed that prayer today and you meant it from your heart, maybe today you just prayed it because you've known Christ. But you faltered and you failed and you've been out of church and you've been away from the word of God. And you've been struggling to find your way back. Today's the day. Maybe you've never prayed that prayer before in your life. Maybe today's the day where it all begins. It's got to start somewhere. If you prayed that prayer today and you meant it for your heart, you just shoot your hand up today. I just want to see hands today. I see that hand. 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 Thank you. Anybody else? Just an uplifted hand. I see that hand. Thank you. Father God, I thank you for those with uplifted hands and uplifted hearts today. I pray that, Lord, your salvation, that, Lord, it would rest on them. That they'd not be able to escape it. That, Lord, everywhere they go and everything they see and everything they touch and every conversation they have, that the name of Jesus would be in the midst of it. Father, I pray that you'll take us from this place and keep us safe. Encourage our hearts and encourage those that have prayed and rededicated their life or maybe asked you into their heart for the first time to find a church if not this church Lord help me to help them find a place that will be a perfect fit for them but God reunite us all together again don't let this become a one Sunday a year ritual in our life but let it become a formation weekly that we come together and follow. That we gather together like your word calls us to. And that we serve you and love you under the presence of your Holy Spirit. And we'll give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy Easter. God bless you guys. Thank you for a great service. Today. Come back and see us Wednesday nights at 7, Sunday mornings at 11. Don't forget Sunday school. 9.30.